there's no other feeling like the privilege and the surge of emotion that goes through you to realise that you're either representing the club you love or your country. Uh, my name is Simon Hill, I'm 25. Uh, the football teams I play for, my club is West Bromwich Albion and uh, internationally I play for England. I probably don't let myself get daunted. I think if you let yourself get daunted, then you're doing yourself a disservice from the start. But they say, don't they, that if you're not nervous, there's something wrong, so. I'm uh, completely blind, and so can't see uh, anything light and dark, nothing. My eye condition, or, or how I became blind, was I was born with uh, a condition called retinoblastoma, which in simple terms is cancer of the eye. They uh, had to remove one of my eyes at uh, six months old um, in a bid to stop it spreading to my other eye. So I could see through one eye until I, I was four, um, but gradually lost that sight. And so I uh, went totally blind at the age of four. As a youngster, I never it never used to cross my mind that I'm, I'm blind, so I maybe can't do that, or maybe that's not a good idea. I think that's the best term, it's frustrating. It's only really, as an adult, it sort of starts to come into my mind that, uh, you know, okay, I maybe can't get away with that now, or things like that, to be honest. I've always played football from, from when I was five or six years old. We play blind football fundamentally the same. Communication is even more important than it is in sighted football. Andy, go on the right at the top. Every player has to be blindfolded. Obviously that's closely monitored by the, the referees because um, unfortunately it has been known for some people to get a, get a bit of a kick out of cheating, so. It's five aside, so four blind players and a sighted goalkeeper. It's uh, played on a pitch with boards at the sides to keep the ball, help keep the ball in play and keep the game flowing. And apart from that, it's just normal five-a-side rules. The only slight difference is when a player goes to make a challenge, you have to say the word voy, which I believe means I go in Spanish. The footballs, um, I guess the main thing is they rattle, obviously. We've got ball bearings in them, so we can obviously locate the ball with sound rather than sight. I got involved in the England setup through a PE teacher at my college. He said to bring us along to a, a training session at Hereford. Then they invited me back for one of the uh, official England training camp. It felt surreal really and, and still at the time I didn't sort of know how far it would go or but it was, at the time it was just a dream come true because I hadn't really done much travelling myself and I hadn't really had the opportunity to play much football in a competitive environment or never really had much coaching. But the main highlight so far was the Paralympics in Beijing. You know, I never imagined that my sport and interest would lead me to taking part in a, a Paralympics. The work I do is answering the non-emergency phone calls for the West Midlands Police Force, so... Obviously, if I'm put on a, a certain shift at work, it means I can't make training or it, it leaves me less time to fit in um, a session in the gym or whatever, so...
to Wolverhampton, certainly. Are they dealing with something for you? Okay. Okay, let's put you through to Wolverhampton Local Police Unit. One moment. I mean, in the last few months, I've, I've taken a break from football because the demands being put on from football and here at work were just... I just found it impossible for a period of time to, to do both of them. So, But regards to my own personal training when I'm at home and... Um, yeah, that that's all paid for out my out my own money that I earn. So it's kind of a catch twenty two. I I sort of need my job to be able to afford it, and but then can't fit as much training in because of my job. So. <laughs> I've wondered am I enjoying it anymore? But then when I'm not playing football, I miss it. So I know that it's not the fact that I don't enjoy it. It's just the uh, the difficulty of balancing full time work with the amount of time I need to put into my football. I was uh, first taken to Sporting Club Albion in 2007. I was the first blind player they recruited and so they asked me to help them find more blind players in order to create a team. We'll warm up, go straight into conditioning games of 2v1, 3v2, okay? Yeah, what we'll yeah. do is, penalty to finish, okay? With me, Sham. Yes, Lee, forward, yep. right, forward. Yep. Yes, Sham. Yep. Right. Yes, Come on, you in. Get off you go. Left side, left side. Yes, let it go. When I shout, go, I'll count you down. Traveling, traveling, traveling. Three, two, one, let it go. The benefits, first and foremost, uh, being able to train with other players local to where I live once a week, which uh, for a long time I didn't have. So three steps back. Just using our leg muscles, push up as hard as we can. Go! Three! One! Up there! Here you are, Mark! Travel! 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 Keep going! Keep going! Three! Two! Round me! Round me! Yes! 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 Keep going! I'll tell you when to stop! Yep! Yep! Travel! Travel! Three! Two! I'm in the amazing position now really of being captain of the team I've supported all my life uh, and playing for my country and that was a dream that or something that you know I, I never thought would be possible. Um, you know, when I want to come, I've said to Adam before, I mean I want to come and I'll train on my own if I have to. Um, you know, and I'll, at the end of the day that's the only way we're going to get better. I mean, Mackie, you come and you talk about you want to get better at this, you want to get better at that, well, that's the only way it's going to happen. To start with, I used to go to training once a week and it would just be literally myself and the coach. But now we've got to a stage where we've got four or five players training regularly. And we've won two league championships. I think that disability sports as a whole should be recognised more financially. I mean, in football in terms, Brazil and Argentina, their players are full-time professionals. Although we work as hard as we can individually, you can't replace the opportunity that they have by training regularly and being paid to play football. Face me. OK. Go ten strides back for me. <coughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, yeah, it, it is frustrating because I always feel a bit limited as to my opportunity to progress. I think the main thing that, that sort of bugs me about it is the fact that we play for our country and our relative teams for, for nothing and, if anything, with an expense to ourselves. So we have to sort of work harder and put more in and at the same time have to go and, and earn a living. So I guess that the main 
thing that saddens me a bit is that the football in this, the professional game has become all sort of more about business and money, whereas blind football, it's still the raw product of football. It's tough and it's honest, and I think people enjoy that. You work hard on your own a lot of the time in the run-up to tournaments and it can be quite a lonely road and uh, you sometimes wonder, you know, do I want to do this anymore? But then uh, when you get to the tournaments and you're caught up in the whole experience, it's, it all then f fits into place. The bigger picture is it's not about me, it's not about what I've done and what I might go on to do. For me, it's about trying to pass on what I've learned to inspire and encourage other people to take up football, even though they have a sight problem. It's just a real motivation to me to help younger blind players and get involved in the game and you know, build themselves, hopefully, a life through football like I have. Nice 